Back on Inside Tennessee with the director of the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation, David Roush, who served as chief of police in Knoxville for seven years before taking this role. Susan? Well, director, I know one of your personal um, concerns and issues when you're here was opioid addiction. It's something you spend a lot of time on locally as well as on national involvement committees and so forth. What are you, what are you finding at that level now? Is it like this everywhere? Was Knoxville an outlier, or what, what do you see statewide? So statewide, the problem exists throughout our state. Uh, Knoxville is not an outlier. Now, th this region, the, the Upper East Tennessee, this region certainly has hit harder than, than others, uh, although it's, it's making its way across the state. And so uh, the good news is, is that the experiences that we had here and how we dealt with things here, we're able to educate uh, the other areas as it's coming, right? And so w we may be able to mitigate a lot of those challenges that we faced uh, w when I was here in Knoxville. And so uh, that's, that's an advantage we have. But the, the problem is spreading, and it, uh, it's not just East Tennessee. It, it's throughout our state. Uh, it's, it's adjusting and changing. You know, one of the things we know is we, we threw everything but the kitchen sink at this problem. And it's working. Something's working. What? We don't know. I, I was sitting down with, with some of the, the, the folks I work with this problem on, and we were trying to figure that out. We're trying to hone in on what is it that's really making a difference. Uh, we're not there yet. We're still trying to, to figure that out because we threw so much at it. We're seeing a decline. We're, you know, it's not as aggressive as we'd like, but we're seeing a decline, which is positive. Um, but, but there's more to do. And so we, we got to figure out what is it that is really making it change and how can we enhance that, whatever that is. David, this is, uh, and this is following up on Susan, I'm sorry. This is a little bit like boxing a sponge though. We are seeing a decline in the opioid and the pills, but it sort of pops out in another spot. What are you seeing yeah. as director where it's <coughs> popping out? Yeah, the whack-a-mole game is, is in full effect. So we're seeing heroin pop, we're seeing fentanyl, and now, uh, uh, you know, as we're paying attention to those illicit drugs, now we're seeing the, the legal drugs on the benzodiazepines are starting to, to, to rise to the level Xanax, Valium, that we used to see right. with, with the opioids. And so, so now we're seeing that rise. And so it, it is whack-a-mole. It, it is, as we think we've got control of one area, we see it pop in another. The, the real issue is we got to get to what the root of the issue, the root of the problem, what is it that's happening societally, you know, in, in our communities that's causing people to turn to, to, to drugs, right? And, and that's where, the, I think that's where the magic pill is, right? If you're looking for a magic pill, to, if you're looking for something to fix this, is you got to find out what it is that's causing, you know, we can't figure, the economies are doing better than they've ever done. So, so, you know, are we leaving be people behind is the question, right? And if so, then how do we pull them into what everybody else is experiencing, right? And so, so you know, that's the challenge. This is personal for you. And yeah. Can you talk about that a little bit? Uh, you know, I can. You know, I, I certainly, um, it, it's impacted my family, and, uh, and it's been tough. Uh, you know, I'm raising a granddaughter. Uh, she is awesome. She's a little, uh, you know, right, about two and a half now, and uh, healthy, thank God. Uh, do I have that in we the we do, <laughs> <laughs> yes. And so, uh, you know, and, and at, at, at this age, I, but I'm not alone. There are a lot of folks, grandparents out there, that are raising, yeah. raising their grandkids because of this problem. And uh, you know, and, and it's and it's a challenge. It's it's not easy. Uh, and uh, you know, but but what a blessing, you know, to have the opportunity. I'm I'm so blessed to have the opportunity to do what we do for her, and uh, you know, and so uh, you know, I've, I've I've been to those appointments, doctors' appointments, where we sat in there and worried about what the impact would be on her of you know she was exposed. Um, what that impact was, because I saw children coming in in much worse conditions, and and just pray for those children, because you know you've got children who are blind and and, and crippled, and you know because of the the, the abuse that was blind. done to them, right? The exposure, and so uh, we're blessed that that none of that's happened in, in this case. You address this, but we talk a lot about demand. Where the drugs are coming from, we talk a lot about as yeah. well. Um, and, and people, uh, we've talked about Mexico being a source for this, and then other cities that have been sort of a pipeline, but you cut to really what is, what is the central question, and that is you cannot stop. It will come from anywhere if you don't hit the demand. It's, it's simple economics. 
effect, right? It's supply and demand. And so we've got to cut the demand. What has been the most effective tool that you've seen so far in your work that has shown it's worked? You know, for demand reduction, I think, uh, uh, quite frankly, I, I'm not sure I've seen the tool yet. Uh, that's it's the not problem. Jail, though, can we agree? Jail, I agree 100%. Jail is not the answer. Having law enforcement handle the problem is not the answer. Uh, it has to be done uh, in community. Uh, it has to be done at the level of, of provider, right? And so that care has to be done. And I don't care how you do it. If you do it through faith base, if you do it through, you know, sanitized corporate base, I don't care how it's done. But it's got to be done. Don't put it on the back of law enforcement because that's where it's at right now. And that's where it's been put as all problems happen to get put, right? They, they lay it on the hands of law enforcement. Mental health is laid on law enforcement. Addictions lay on law enforcement because nobody else wants to deal with it. And we're not, we're not the ones that should be dealing with it. It's interesting that you brought up uh, uh, economics being an issue and are we leaving some folks behind? I spent some time in a rural county recently and there was just a line of people involved with methamphetamine with appointed counsel and they were you know frequent flyers as we call them and it's clear these folks didn't have jobs didn't have opportunities for jobs yet as you said you know we were supposed to be in a booming economy and I wonder if we've left a large segment of our population behind in this so-called well, I, I think I think that's part of it Don I also think that we've got to work with those folks right so mm -hmm. again I, I, I this hits me personally because because I understand this we, we can give them a job but they won't maintain it if you don't give them treatment. wraparound treatment and care, That's right. right? And and you know and and it doesn't happen the first time. It may not happen the tenth time. But you can't give up. You got to keep pushing, and you got to keep having hope, and you got to keep trying for folks, right? You can't give up on them, and 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 too often we give up, and that that's that's why we're one of my are. favorite sayings. Very quickly, is you don't stop wrestling the gorilla when you're tired. You stop when the gorilla's tired, and this gorilla's not tired. Right. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with more of Inside Tennessee and the director of the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation right after this.